welcome to another episode of Sean's Law. I'm your host, Sean Grant. Before we go any further, we're going to ask you to do a few things. Watch, like, share, and subscribe. You see that red button under the screen, subscribe? We're going to ask you to press on it before we go any further. So let us jump into the next episode. This is not necessarily a happy episode. I remember doing an interview on KLA Sports FM 89, a radio station that I worked for nearly 15 years, at least two weeks ago. They asked a question. What was my best broadcast at KLAS? I couldn't answer. And they said, the next question, they asked, what was my worst day on a broadcast while I was there? I thought about it for about two seconds. I had the answer on the tip of my tongue. 2016, September. I was doing a schoolboy football game with Zidane Matthews, Excelsior versus St. George's College. A young man was playing for St. George's, the captain. He collapsed after two minutes of action while the game was being played. The game was stopped, the young man was uh, taken off, and then he was rushed to hospital. We were still doing the first half of the game, but then after the first half, we realized the second half was not starting. So I went down from the commentary booth down to the stadium track at Stadium East. And this was what happened right after. Welcome back to the Stadium East Complex. I'm actually standing on the track now for this uh, Issa Flow Mining Cup group encounter. This between Excelsior and St. George's College. News that we're getting now that the, the game has been called off because uh, the captain of uh, St. George's team fell down to the turf. Uh, no one actually challenged him after two minutes of action. He was rushed to the hospital. There was no stretcher here. And the news that we are hearing that the young man has passed away. We just spoke to the referee, Wilfred Glenn Namey, and I don't know if he got word, but it has been called off. So there will be no play in the second half of this matchup. Wilfred Glenn Namey now coming off the field along with his assistants. And we see the coach of Excelsior, Tavar Thomas, and the HOD of Excelsior, Xavier Gilbert, also walking off with Mr. Bromfield, the principal of Excelsior, also there in the mix. We see the St. John's players coming back on. Never Bertis Bell leading his troops on the field. And he's actually crying. Alex Marshall also crying. The players walking behind each other on the field. And being hugged, Never Bertis Bell by Shavar. And they're actually walking to the center circle. St. John's players holding each other, tears rolling down their faces. Paul Young Jr. is also in the mix crying. Cordell Irving, a former player with the team members, uh, the crying going into the center circle. I don't know if it's a show of respect. Uh, they'll be helped up into the center circle. And uh, Never Bertis Bell is hugging his players as we speak. And some of the players are down on the ground, can't make it to the center circle. So the players of Excelsior also walking down to the center circle, a uh, show of respect. The spectators are still inside of the stands of the Stadium East of Complex as all players are walking inside of the center circle right now. As what we witnessed in the first half was not football at all. It goes beyond football. It's a flow, a Manning Cup, all about this group encounter. The players are inside of the center circle. That's grouped all around players from Excelsior, players from St. George's College as a griefing the loss of their captain he was playing the first two minutes fell down to the turf and was rushed to the hospital there was, there was no stretcher here but he was helped up by persons and he looked unconscious when he was helped up for the first two minutes of the game that actually happened the news came at the end of the first half when the players were coming off the field so never Bertis bell hugged by Xavier gilbert who's also I said, George is old boy and head of department at Excelsior High School. Shafar Thomas also here in the mix. And the huddle is there having a prayer. What a day it has been. This goes beyond football. Loss of a life of a youngster in high school. 
it's not what you'd want to see at this level. Forces are now kneeling players and also officials are kneeling. Principals also are kneeling inside of the center circle as they walk back from the center circle. Never brought a smell. What's the news you heard? Well, Sean, we just called and heard that Dominic passed. Um, boy, this one tough. It's never happened to me as a coach that um, we lost a player, um, whether from our team or the other team. I can't just imagine what uh, his mother and father feel like now because he's their only child. Um, I never saw this before. I'm not certain what went on. The doctor told me that he, he had a, a seizure. Never happened before. I pray for his family. Um, I pray for everyone um, who was here today. I think the Excelsior team, they feel as bad. They were so good to us. They were so very good to us. But boy, this one tough, Sean. This one tough. When you saw him on the ground, um, you were a bit concerned at that time? I was very concerned because I hadn't seen it. And when I looked at his eyes, well, uh, his eyes, they were very glazed. The doctors, we had two doctors here. They went immediately. And immediately they said, um, check him. I think we have to give the, the assistant referee um, a lot of credit because it was off the ball and he went down. And it was the assistant who stopped the game immediately and called us. But as I said, it has never happened before. Um, God. We know we have to go on, but boy, this one tough, Sean. This one tough. I know he was alive when he left here. And then when we called, we heard that he has passed. But I, I pray for his, his mother and father. Again, he's the only child. He's, he's such a wonderful child. He's a great student athlete. He has so many subjects. Came to us from JC a couple of years ago. Um, the fact that he was named captain this year, we realized that he was probably the leader for the team. Um, but, but again, boy, uh, this, this one tough is... It's, it's almost like I lost my son. Well, I think you know the way I coach, Sean, and, and I, I love them so much. And, but again, this is just not about me. This is about uh, his family, his friends, the, the, the team here. Um, I, I thank the referees for calling the game off. Why? I don't know if we could have handled it. I don't know if the excess team could have handled it because they were so very concerned. Um, so we just pray that um, he is, he is close close to, to the father. We are always told that uh, when you die, you're in a better place. I pray he's, he's with him now, and we will obviously have to continue the season. I don't think we can do anything, but boy, this one tough, Sean. This one tough. So there you have it. Dominic James collapsing and dying in September 2016. If you realize, if you listen through the broadcast, I did not mention the young man's name. Reason being, I don't know who was listening, whether his father or his mother. I saw the vehicle rushed and carried him out through the gate at Stadium East, but I don't know who it was. So I chose not to say the young man's name. I said the position because it's a broadcast. But condolences once more to his family and friends. I'd have to say a major respect to coach Neville Burtis Bell. If I respected him less before that, it grew 1,000 times right after. That was an epic day in schoolboy football. That's my view. What say you?